Hello everyone, this is Sandeep Rathore again. Welcome to my channel, US Recruitments. So this is uh, the uh, fifth video, uh, fifth topic of our uh, training uh, season two, US Recruitments. In this video, we will discuss about uh, security clearance. So before moving uh, to the security clearance, we will understand why a person needs security clearance, right? Uh, so a person need security clearance to protect classified information, right? So this is the uh, main reason behind the security clearance to protect the classified information. Now, what is classified information? So this is our first topic, classified information. Classified information is a material that is uh, that a government body deems to be sensitive and it must be protected. Right. So the information that should be protected uh, by the government, by the federal agencies are uh, known as classified information. To protect or we can say if we want to access these classified informations then we need security clearance so the group of people who can access these classified informations can have the security clearance i hope it is clear now right so these uh, classified informations are also known as restricted data, national security information or formally known as a restricted data, right? Uh, so this is uh, when uh, the information contained national security data or national security information as well. So uh, we will discuss about in it uh, uh, about the national security and the clearance in detail but before moving uh, to that uh, I can let you know what are the types of classified information there are two types of classified information the first one is SCI that is sensitive compartmented information so uh, what is SCI SCI uh, as the name shows compartmented so it is a kind of program that segregate various types of classified information into different compartments and after classified into the different compartment it provides protection in, in a distributed way or in a distributed control way so this is known as SCI sensitive compartmented compartmented information and uh, this is a high level uh, uh, information that can be processed after SSBI after single scope background investigation this kind of SCI clearance can be provided to the candidate by the way it is not a kind of uh, clearance this is a special authorization to access the information I will let you know about it in the next slide as well. Uh, for now, this is not a type of security clearance. So TSSCI or SCI, it is not a security clearance. It is just information that should be protected. Or we can say in other words, it is a kind of special access to secret or top secret employees. Now, the second thing is special access program. Now, this is also uh, involved highly when, when the candidate has to work on the highly sensitive, highly sensitive projects, then DOD can provide uh, some special access uh, to different uh, employees, such as to perform the new military technologies if a candidate is working on that or some other DOD programs. 
So this special access programs is provided by the government to the candidate and this clearance is uh, granted to very few individuals. So these were uh, two uh, types of the classified information. Now we will understand what is security clearance. As we already discussed uh, that uh, what is classified information. So if a candidate has to protect those for classified information, then a person need a security clearance, right? Now these informations can be uh, like a generic inf information can be highly sensitive information. So according to that, there are three types of security clearance. We will understand what are those. So first is confidential clearance. The second clearance is secret clearance. The third one is top secret clearance. So this is a, uh, this is a, like a hierarchy of the candidates. When candidate, when um, the candidate or employee has to work a general uh, informations or has to access the general information, then confidence clearance is okay. When the information is a bit high level, the candidate can work through secret clearance. And when the information is uh, uh, highly uh, important, then the candidate can work through top secret clearance. So these are the levels of security clearance, confident, confidential, secret and top secret. Now I will let you know uh, some more details about these clearance. So the first is confidential clearance, right? Confidential clearance is provided to the candidate who would like to work on the like uh, minimum uh, minimum uh, protection uh, security information. So if the candidate has confidential clearance and uh, if the information is leaked, so there could be some, some kind of damage in the national security is uh, possible. Uh, the clearance level requires renewal every 15 years, right? So in every 15 years, the clearance should be uh, renewable. Also, like a program manager, executive assistant, like kind of non-technical candidates or uh, I would say where the information is not very important, those kind of people can work on the confidential clearance. If we will talk about secret clearance, so the person who has a secret clearance can disclose the data, definitely a serious a damage is possible to the national security. So counterintelligence analyst, a cyber security analyst, technical writers, engineers, cyber security engineers, security engineers comes into this category. It is not mandatory that the only these job titles can hold uh, the secret clearance. It is uh, depending on the requirement of the company, federal or government company, right? According to that, the companies validate the candidate and then provide the those kind of clearance a secret it may be secret top secret or confidential right so secret clearance must be renewed in every 10 years 10 years now top secret clearance top secret clearance is the uh, most uh, restrictive and uh, it provides access to the information that cause grave damage to the national security if disclosed. So highly sensitive informations are protected by top secret clearance. It, it must be reinvestigated uh, for continuous eligibility in every five years, right? Uh, nuclear policy analyst, system administrator, senior uh, system admin, those kind of uh, candidates come into this category. It's, again, it is not mandatory, 
that they will have the top secret clearance or they must have the top secret clearance. It totally depends on the requirement of the client or the federal company through which they are working and uh, on which project they are working. Right? Now, how these security clearance are, are provided? Right? There would be SSBI, single scope background investigation is involved also background investigation is also involved i will let you know about ssbi and uh, background verification process in detail in the next slide so we continue with uh, me right now top secret sci most of the recruiters work on the requirement and they saw that uh, uh, top secret sci clearance is required so uh, first of all TSSCI is not any particular security clearance, right? This is not the fourth security clearance. This is just that a candidate who is already holding top secret clearance, the government is providing to uh, providing the authority to access some additional information or some additional uh, compartmental compartmented information to the candidate. These are known as TSSCI. So, uh, SCI grant access to certain information such as intelligence sources, method or analytical process. So, this is not a different kind of security clearance. It is just an authority that you can access some more information through SCI. Also, SCI is not any security specific uh, any specific security clearance right uh, means uh, SCI can be with secret SCI can be with confidential as well it totally depends on the need of the project so SCI is not uh, specific to any security clearance now we will understand about public trust Sometimes we also uh, have to work on the public trust position uh, and we understand, we think that public trust is a clearance. Actually, it is uh, not comes to, into the uh, clearance level, but we usually say it is a kind of clearance. So public trust clearance. Public trust clearance refers to a status granted to in individual which allows them to gain access to classified information such as state secrets and military classified data. So whenever the candidate has to handle some state secrets, it is not talking about, we are not talking about national security. Here, uh, those kind of public trust is providing to the candidate who has to handle state secrets, not the national security and some military uh, classified data. Right? I hope it is clear. So our other clearance was related to national security data, but these uh, public trust is not related to the national security. They are just uh, uh, handling the state secrets means state security. Right? Also, they also may gain access to restricted areas after the completion of thorough background check. Uh, this clearance is issued uh, to federal employees, employees of various agencies whose positions directly or indirectly affect the public at large in the United States. Also, there are three types of public trust clearance, which are high level, moderate level and low level. So these are the levels of the public trust. I hope you are good with public trust, we would not consider it in the types of clearance, but this is also a kind of uh, clearance. Now, in team security clearance, in team security clearance is something, uh, you know, means a candidate has been applied for the security clearance, but he or she did not get the clearance till now right so what uh, should be the possibilities 
the candidate can get the interim clearance and can work or can get the information access through those uh, through this interim clearance right so we can say it is a kind of temporary and limited security clearance uh, which is uh, which provide the access to the classified information to the candidate right and it is uh, routinely granted during a security clearance investigation and it ends immediately upon the conclusion of the investigation with either a clearance grant or denied. Right? I hope it is clear. So during the security clearance investigation, interim security clearance is provided and you can, our candidate can access the uh, classified information or the data without getting the security clearance the candidate can work on this security clearance. So this is known as interim, interim security clearance. Now, we will understand what kind of jobs uh, require for the security clearance. It is, I just mentioned some of the job titles, but it is not necessary that only these people can work on the uh, security clearance, right? Other positions and uh, other job titles candidate can also work. Some of the positions include uh, cryptographer, security analyst, counterintelligence analyst, technical writer, chief information security officers. These are some of the titles uh, who can work uh, with this security clearance. Now we will understand what is SSVI and uh, SCI we already discussed, but you know, while working, we, uh, while working as a recruiter, we saw these terms uh, most of the times, SSBI and SCI. So, we will discuss about SSBI first. Uh, SSBI, uh, it is a kind of security investigation that is conducted by the US government to obtain the top secret clearance, right? So, SSBI, we can understand it is a kind of background investigation, right? Also, SCI. SCI is information, SSBI is investigation. So these both terms are different. The one is investigation, another one is information. I hope uh, do not uh, confuse in both the terms. Both terms are not same. Now we will understand what kind of government agencies can provide security clearance? So any government agencies who can handle classified information, all issue security clearance, why? Right? Uh, there is no single agency serve as a point of contact for the entire federal government. But DOD conduct most of the background investigation. 90% uh, uh, investigations are performed, uh, background investigations are performed by Department of Defense, right? Uh, there is a good thing that uh, different federal agencies accept each other's investigation, right? So they can mutual cooperate and can accept each other's investigation. Agencies that commonly require security clearance, those are Department of Defense, Department of Homeland Security, Department of Energy, Department of State and FBI. Now I will explain what are these agencies. So firstly, Department of Defense Agency. Uh, I would say most of the decisions are, it is a big decision maker. 80-90% of the uh, security clearance has, are provided by DOD. Department of Homeland Security. When uh, the clearance is provided for the state, local, private sector, ter terrorism and tribal entities, then these kind of uh, security clearances are provided by the DOH, Department of Homeland Security. Now, Department of Energy, when the candidate is working on a special nuclear material, uh, doing researches or doing some programming or any kind of administration work, 
so department of energy can also provide the uh, security clearance those are known as l security clearance and q security clearance i will explain in next slide now department of state right so again when uh, the investigations are for departmental employees uh, the department of states can provide the security clearance the last is fbi so fbi can provide security clearance to on employees as well as for state employees and local law officials so these kind of security clearances are provided by fbi now we will understand department of energy authorization so doe also authorize and issues l and q access authorization l authorization is corresponding to the uh, secret clearance and q authorization is equal to the top secret clearance now yankee white uh, yankee white is a special uh, uh, security clearance who is provided to the president and the working with the president and the vice president right now background investigation process uh, i already we already discussed about ssbi process now uh, you can uh, read it uh, the document i will uh, i already uh, pasted here but uh, a general overview we can take what is background investigation process so what happened uh, for any kind of security clearance process uh, we the candidate must go through the background investigation and this background investigation is uh, done through bureau of uh, diplomatic security right so the candidate uh, will confirm or will receive a conditional offer of the employment uh, from any of the federal company and they will go through some questionnaires right those questionnaires can be related to a national security known and sensitive uh, positions or public trust right uh, the hiring of, of officials uh, collect these documents from the candidate and submit them to the defense counter intelligence and uh, security agencies known as dcsa uh, also known as dss defense security system right and uh, the candidate now they uh, look over the documents the candidate must uh, meet a specific requirement uh, should be with good character mental health conditions everything should be meet and um, the candidate could be eligible to get the security clearance and during this process there is also polygraph test perform right so polygraph test is performed to get the security clearance now we will understand what is polygraph test why right. so polygraph test uh, also known as a lie detector test uh, it is a basically lie detector machine that measures a person's psychological response when they respond to the questions right and there are three types of uh, polygraphic uh, test first is counter intelligence polygraph uh, when some limited questions asked to the candidate then uh, we called it uh, ci polygraph counter intelligence polygraph lifestyle polygraph uh, the lifestyle polygraph basically ask for more personal questions and uh, informations about uh, uh, the present and past behavior of the candidate now what is full scope polygraph full scope polygraph is the combination of ci and lifestyle polygraph so uh, basically these levels you should understand uh, suppose your uh, position requires ci poly tssci your top secret with ci polygraph so what you can you can submit you can definitely submit a candidate with top secret with full scope polygraph because if you are submitting a candidate is with full scope polygraph it will automatically complete the ci polygraph right so that is the reason we are understanding the hierarchy same as suppose you have a position 
um, in that you require a candidate with secret security clearance and you got a candidate with the top secret security clearance definitely you can submit that candidate for that uh, position because you have a candidate that uh, that has higher level security uh, clearance but if your positions requires top secret security clearance and you got a uh, candidate with uh, secret clearance you cannot submit that candidate i hope it is clear that is the reason we are understanding the level of level and the hierarchy of the uh, clearance security clearance so that we can understand the these uh, uh, terminologies and we can uh, submit the qualified candidate to our client i hope we are done and we have covered everything uh, related to uh, security clearance uh, before this as well i have uh, uh, represented the video in which uh, uh, i have discussed about the uh, h1b how, how we can identify h1b fake candidates uh, and uh, uh, before uh, this uh, in the first season i have represented some videos in that uh, we have discussed about us geography uh, visas different tax terms everything i have uh, uh, explained in the details so you can go through season one as well and uh, in the season uh, season two uh, we are discussing about recruitment uh, what a recruiter do what should be the roles and responsibility what uh, is basic uh, recruitment and uh, some other topics i have covered so please uh, go through the videos uh, watch the videos uh, share like and subscribe the videos and if you have any query uh, please comment me and uh, we will definitely discuss about it uh, thanks a lot for uh, watching the video uh, be connected uh, see you soon thanks bye take care